Hello, yes, more collar talking bollocks, part two. I thought I'd continue from yesterday's talk regarding more collars and traditionalism on a more serious note. Let's take traditionalism. Where does it begin? Where does it end? What period are we referring to? A time when people wore clogs, square danced, listened to uh, Beethoven and Mozart? Exactly, what period are we referring to? Would anyone describe Guns N' Roses as being traditional Western music? Because that's what, who you follow, Mark Collins, and there's nothing wrong with that. But they're not traditionalists, are they? That's not traditional music, far from it, right? So, again, you see, the hypocrisy and double standards here shines through. Millennial woes, Mark Collins, are you both married to a traditional wife? with a traditional family, bringing them up the traditional way? Well, the answer's no. Here's more hypocrisy and double standards. You're telling everyone else to do it. You see, our enemies are pushing that nonsense because they know it doesn't work. You see, ask yourself this. What's the most important thing to a drowning man? It's oxygen. What's the most important thing to a man in a blazing red-hot desert? It's water. What was the most important thing to people in the 1930s? It was bread and jobs, of course. So where does traditionalism, heritage, culture and civilization come into it? In the sense of saving the day. Or should I say, where people would look up to that as the way and the only way, the only political way of saving the day. Bringing food back, bringing the jobs back. Well, they, they wouldn't, right? It's just that stupid. And also, society now, rightly or wrongly, has changed so much now. Tradition would be laughed at, you'd be ridiculed. But again, it depends what period you're referring to. Like I've said, should we all go back wearing clogs and start square dancing? Right, well, you certainly would be laughed at if that's uh, how you conducted yourself and that, that's the type of dress it here and dance you're performing, I'm sure. People would look at it as odd and bizarre. So where does tradition begin? Where does it end? How is it a political force that this revolutionary elite clique, cadres with Griffin at the helm, or God help us, call us at the helm? Where, where is the evidence, right, that it's a political force? Where? When? What period? I don't know of one, right? Not in the 20th century, which really, that's all that matters. Right? So, our enemies push this because they know if you were to campaign, you know, here's one for you. Mark Collett, Millennial Woes, stop the traditionalist party. Both stand as traditional candidates. Put out literature that you stand for traditional dress, traditional music, traditional food, traditional everything. See how many votes you get. Well, there you go. Now, those watching this video, video know exactly what I've just said and they know exactly the results of such a candidate pushing such nonsense. He'd be lucky if he got his 10 signatures that enable him to stand, right? He'd be lucky if he got them, right? So again, where does tradition begin? Where does it end? How is it a political force? Where has it been a political force? Were the people of the 1930s in Britain, Germany, Italy or wherever, were they more concerned? with traditional dress, music, food, than they were uh, creating jobs and putting their food on the table? Were they more concerned over tradition than that? Well, no, of course not. Like I've said, the most important thing to a drowning man is oxygen, right? And the most important thing to our people at the moment is not traditional dress, music, or poetry, or food. It's solving the problems, issues and tragedies they're facing on a daily basis. The roads are congested, the trains are congested, unemployment, crime, the list is endless. But yet according to call it millennial woes and all the rest of them, tradition is what's going to save the day. How? Uh, again, you see, I make these videos and not one person, that's right, not one person sends me a message or does a, a video in response where you can see the face, right? To say, no, Joe, you're wrong. And, uh, you know, if you did, if you do, then I'll, I'll upload a new video and say, you know, I never thought of that. Well, no one ever does. 
set up the live webcam, the live, uh, live stream, is it? Me, you, Millennial Woe, Dr. David Duke, if you want more Colette, right? And we'll have a debate on it. How traditionalism, heritage, culture, civilization is a political force so big, so powerful that it, the masses will rally behind it and will take power using, you know, the message of traditionalism uh, or whatever. You know, where? When? It doesn't exist. It's nonsense. But that's why our enemies are pushing this because they know it's nonsense. Okay, thank you.